Over the past week, a number of local events have been canceled or postponed due, the, due to some extreme weather conditions. Last night, temperatures dipped as low as minus 27. But with people flooding to the streets, all hands were on deck for this year's Parade of Lights. <laughs> After last year's parade was confined to the parking lot at the Lloyd X, last night's event signaled a return to form for the seventh annual display. The parade also teamed up with Lloyd Minster's sexual assault services to collect toys for children in need as parade president Ryan LeBlanc expressed his gratitude. Uh, we've got a number of, uh, of toys and teddy bears that uh, uh, we've had uh, brought in already, so we're so excited for that and thankful. Thanks to 56 registered participants, along with other donations from the public, $22,000 was raised for four local charities. Tate Lakecraft, Primetime Local News. With Christmas right around the corner, Mayor Gerald Albers is encouraging the community to consider giving to local charities this holiday season. His comments came after last week's council meeting. The mayor says Lloyd Minster has a large number of hardworking nonprofits that are in desperate need of food and toy donations. I know we're a generous community. Year after year, people step forward, and I would encourage them to take the time to stop and support the Olive Tree. The Olive Tree and Salvation Army are both accepting food donations for hampers, while there's a number of toy drives taking place across the city. While 2021 may have been a better year financially for many in the city, Mayor Albers says there are still people in the community who are struggling in this year. Any donation can go a long way. And I want to thank the volunteers that help organize it, the volunteers that staff it, but also to those that donate. Please, we ask with them from the bottom of your heart, if you can support someone with just a small donation, it goes a long ways for someone that doesn't have any folks. A full list of drop-off locations for the 41st annual Gift of Christmas can be found on the Real Country website. With not only the pandemic continuing and the holidays right around the corner once again, domestic violence rates have increased within certain households. Our Shelby Clark spoke with the Lloyd Minster Interval Home Society to get advice and resources for those who are struggling. We are joined here today for Primetime Local News with the CEO of the Lloyd Minster Interval Home Society. And we're here today to speak on domestic violence through the winter season, holidays, and through the pandemic. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Angela. Thank you for having me. Now, would you say that the rate of domestic violence within households has grown since the pandemic began especially? Um, I, I, yes, I, I think that that is the case. Um, mostly due to anytime there's kind of an increase in stress, um, those behaviors, those power and control type of behaviors that are inherent in the cycle of violence, um, they are exacerbated. So they, they come out anytime stressors increase. And I mean, obviously the last almost two years has just been one long kind of variation of stress um, for, for individuals and, and families and communities. Um, and then, you know, the Christmas season is, is also a stressful time of year. Um, it could be good stress or it could be, you know, a negative stressor, but um, stress is stress. And anytime there's a stressor in a relationship and there's negative kind of coping behaviors already existing, um, you can see those escalating. And in the nature of domestic violence or family violence, you, this time of year, you, you, you do see an increase. Now, of course, the main aspect that we really wanted to speak on for this discussion is getting some advice and tips for people stuck in those situations that struggle to get out of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first the first thing to know is you're not alone. Domestic violence impacts so many people. And um, although we've done a lot of work over the years and, and I to kind of bring awareness around domestic violence, and people talk about it more, even in the 20 years that I've been working in the realm of domestic violence services and crisis support, people are talking about it more, but when you find yourself in that cycle of violence or in a violent um, or an unhealthy or relationship impacted by domestic violence, you can't help but feel alone because isolation is also um, part of that cycle. Um, so first and foremost, know that you're not alone and know that there are resources out there to help you. 
um, whether you go directly to the RCMP detachment through 911 or calling the RCMP or, you know, calling the Lloydminster Interval Home Society, we have a 24-hour crisis line. Um, and I know sometimes when, and this is one of one thing that's been unique to the pandemic in relation to domestic violence, is that women have been at home with the perpetrators of abuse because we've all been in lockdown. So reaching out for those resources has been tricky. So we have actually added a, a chat feature on our website for, for folks to, to communicate with us through a chat bot on, bot on website. So um, if we've done everything possible to open up channels um, for people to reach us um, and we're, we're willing to help 24 seven. Now, what kind of advice would the Interval Home Society like to give people that aren't necessarily in those situations, but they know and have loved ones in those situations and they want to help them get out of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, the first response I, I give when asked, what do I do, is number one, just listen and believe. And, and that's really and truly the first thing that one can do is just listen and believe and, and offer to help whether that be connecting them to the Lloydminster Interval Home or calling the police um, if, if it's warranted, right? If, if that's the situation, if it's, there's an immediate danger situation, of course, call 911. Um, but if they're looking for resources or help for themselves or to know what to do, certainly call the Lloydminster Interval Home Society and, and we can help walk. That's another portion of what we do is help the community walk through response to domestic violence. We don't just help the people that are being impacted directly by family violence, we help the community and help the supporters respond to domestic violence. So, but the first thing I can say right here right now is, is listen and, and believe and ask how that you can help. I think that's a really important question. How can I help you? I think that would be one of the first things that I, I would ask them. And is there anything that we didn't touch base on for people needing help and resources, especially right now with the winter season here and holidays coming up? Yeah, I think the easiest, fastest way um, to get a hold of us as a resource in our community and region is either A, phoning our 24-hour crisis line or accessing our website. Everything that you, you would need to know about family violence, domestic violence, which is the same thing, um, and what resources are available to you are available through through those two channels. Um, so two places, you know, if it's not an immediate crisis, our website or our phone number, which is 875-0966. Perfect. So well, I'm glad we're able to get the word out about this for people that may be in those situations right now and they didn't know what kind of help and resources were out there. So once again, thank you so much for joining us today, Angela. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, uh, for your first look at weather, we'll toss to a fellow believer in Turtleneck Tuesday. Thanks so much, Tate. Yes, it is Turtleneck Tuesday. Yes, this is going to be a new tradition we're going to start on here. So, you know, Tuesdays are for turtlenecks, so make sure you're wearing one every Tuesday now. But now here in the border city, we are sitting at minus seven degrees. So we did see a lot warmer of a day today, you know, compared to what we've been seeing last week for sure. With that wind chill, it does feel like minus 15 degrees. So it has cooled down just a bit later on through the day, but we did see a little bit more sun, which helped warmed up throughout the day. Now switching to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, most are seeing around minus uh, eight degrees in most spots on the map, minus six in Lacobiche as well as down in Provost, minus five degrees in Vagreville and Wainwright, while Vermilion and Marwain are sitting at minus six and Edmonton's a little slightly warmer at minus four degrees. Switching over to the Saskatchewan side here, they're seeing some slightly cooler temperatures from what we were expecting yesterday uh, for today's temperatures uh, up in Isla Cross and Green Lake. They're the coolest with minus 12, minus 14, as well as in St. Walberg, minus nine in Meadow Lake and Pearson Wild is minus eight in Maidstone and North Battleford and Macklin is sitting at minus seven degrees. But for North Battleford overnight, they will be going down to a low of minus 13 throughout the night. So they are seeing a, a warmer uh, ch uh, temperature for their night. Uh, they're going to be seeing a little bit more cloudier skies and tomorrow they will be seeing another beautiful day there at minus nine so not too cool there but they will be seeing a high chance of some flurries throughout the day.
Switching over to Cold Lake overnight, they'll be going out to a low of minus 15, so they will be cooling down just a bit, but not too badly there uh, compared to what they've been seeing as well last week. They will be seeing some cloudier skies, and tomorrow they will be seeing some flurries right off in the morning there, around a 60% chance of some flurries, seeing minus 12 for their temperature for tomorrow. And switching over here in the border city, we're going to be seeing some flurries start up uh, later in the evening here with uh, minus 12, so we won't be seeing as cool as the temperature, but we will be seeing some snowfall, which will continue into tomorrow morning, seeing minus 8, so we will still see a warmer temperature for tomorrow. Now looking at our three day forecast for here in the border city, we're going to see those flurries continue on to Thursday as well at minus 12. So get ready to see some more snow and Friday for our Christmas Eve there minus 22. So we will be cooling down just in time for the holidays, but tis the season. Am I right? That's the first look at your weather forecast. We'll have more coming up after the break. Welcome back. Potato farmers in Prince Edward Island have been dealing with frustrations after Canada imposed a ban on the export of potatoes to the United States. For more on the somewhat surprising reason for the ban, here's Jillian Code. We're frustrated and that's where we want to do everything possible to get this going again and we will do anything that's necessary of us to get it going again. Earlier this week, a convoy of trucks carried half a million pounds of potatoes through the streets of Charlottetown in the hopes of sending a message to the federal government on how a Canadian-initiated potato trade ban is impacting PEI farmers. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency banned potato exports to the United States this November after routine testing revealed the presence of potato warts in two fields within an acre of land. And it was located in a field that was in quarantine that those potatoes weren't supposed to leave the island. They were going to be processed into French fries, which then leaves them, you know, that there's no danger anymore. Potato warts pose no threat to human health, but are an agricultural pest. The discovery of potato warts in 2000 resulted in a U.S. imposed six-month import ban. The current trade ban is preventing an estimated $120 million in trade revenue. There are a majority of farms that do a lot of just United States uh, loads. You know, that's how they set up their packaging sheds. That's how they set up their business. And they all of a sudden lose that market. They're, they're, now everybody's running around trying to figure out where they can sell and how they can sell. The ban was originally limited to seed potatoes, but has since been expanded to include table potatoes. The federal government recently announced $28 million in funding for potato farmers to help ship product cross-country to food banks. But farmers say they need the border to reopen. This did one thing that I hardly ever have seen before in my life, and it took, took away the ambition of a farmer. I've seen farmers lose fields to floods. I've seen farmers, you know, have pest problems in their field where they have tremendous losses and they're usually still positive enough to look forward to the next year. And in a situation like this kind of destroyed that usual optimism that, that you see in the industry. Some PEI farmers have had discussions with farmers in other countries in an attempt to establish trade and move product. One thing you can do is look for a bag of potatoes that's say grown in PEI. I guess that's that's the main thing I would ask. Jillian Code, Primetime Local News. Now uh, for farmers and livestock fanatics, here's a look at your agriculture prices. <music> Vermillion held home to the PWM Steelers last night as the team wrapped up eight consecutive games on the road. For more on last night's results against the Edmonton Pandas, here's Evan Kenny. Behind me doesn't look like the Service Sports Center. However, it was where the Lloydminster PWM Steelers called home on Monday night. The Steelers hosted the Edmonton Pandas for their first home game in nearly two months. 
Yeah, I mean, it takes a toll, obviously. It's nice to play at home, have the home advantage. And I mean, even though this is our home game tonight, it's not at home. So it's, yeah, it gets difficult after a while, for sure. The last time the Steelers were on home ice was back on Halloween. It's no trick or treat. The team played eight straight road games. We have spent the last two months on the road, um, not just in our league, but we've also went to a tournament out in Wilcox. So... Yeah, it's been a lot of bus time and a lot of hotel time, but they've rallied behind each other, you know, because, like I said, playing this many games on the road for this long is not easy. And it hasn't just been tough from an on-ice perspective. It's kind of, it's hard to balance, like, school and hockey, because obviously when we went to our tournament the last weekend, we were missing a lot of school, so it's hard to keep up with that. And, like, we're not with our parents a lot of the time either, so it's, yeah, it's it gets difficult for sure. The Steelers will play six of their final 11 games in Lloyd Minster and turn the tables on visiting teams. That's, that's our goal, and that's what we've been talking about, is when we do finally get back home, is just making it a very hard place to come play, right? That when teams show up, they know they're going to be in for a long night. I'm so excited, like even for Christmas break, just to be at home with my family and like, yeah, getting to play some home games will be nice for sure. The Steelers will start the new year on home ice when they host the Red Deer Chiefs January 8th. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. Tossing again to my turtleneck twin, here's Shelby Clark with weather. Thanks so much, Tate. Now taking another look at your weather forecast, we'll be looking at the central region of Alberta and Saskatchewan here. On the Alberta side, as you can see, most are seeing that minus 6 degree point right now. Minus 4 in Edson and Edmonton, while Red Deer is sitting at minus 7 degrees. Switching over to the Saskatchewan side here, they're seeing some slightly cooler temperatures compared to what the Alberta side is seeing. Cold Lake is at minus 8 as well as down in North Battleford. Minus 9 in Meadow Lake, while it is minus 12 in Saskatoon and is minus 13 in Melfort and Prince Albert. Now switching over to our northern region, of the provinces they have cooled down quite a bit compared usually the northern region is seeing some cooler temperatures compared to the central region uh, even in Stony Rapids they've passed uh, minus 32 degrees right now so they are looking very cool up in that area there uranium city is at minus 26 while Wollaston Lake is at minus 25 minus 19 in south end while Flin Flon is hitting just hitting that minus 20 mark as well and La Ronge Buffalo Nurse and La Lasher is hitting minus 13 minus 14 degrees switching over to this side now they are seeing some uh, a lot warmer temperatures compared to the Saskatchewan side, especially down here in this area. Grand Prairie, Peace River and Slave Lake are sitting at minus 6, minus 7 degrees. It is minus 11 in Fort McMurray and high level, while Fort Chippewa is the coolest, seeing minus 21. Switching over to our southern region now, they are seeing some, they aren't struggling too bad. As you can see, they're seeing some nice temperatures for today. Lethbridge is even hitting a plus 2 right now. Minus 2 in Medicine Hat, though, and Calgary is just hitting that zero mark, while Coronation and Baffer are slightly cooler at minus 5, minus 8 degrees. Switching over to this side here now, now they're seeing some slightly cooler temperatures compared to the Alberta side for the southern region here. Uh, minus 7 in Swift Current and Kindersley. Minus 9 in Musha and Regina while the rest are seeing minus 12, minus 13 degrees. But as we go back across the region, the temperatures overnight tonight, we are going to be seeing some slightly warmer temperatures than what we've been seeing uh, earlier on in the week and definitely compared to last week. Uh, a low of minus 12 for Murnham and Wainwright tonight. A low of minus 13 that Unity will be seeing. A low of minus 14 for Provost while Bonneville and Paradise Hill will be seeing a low of minus 15 degrees. Pearson will be seeing a low of minus 16, while Meadow Lake and Isla Cross will be slightly cooler, seeing a low of minus 19 for Meadow Lake, and Isla Cross will even be seeing a low of minus 23. But most spots will be seeing some cloudier skies throughout the night, while most will also be seeing a high chance of some flurries. And now switching over to temperatures tomorrow across the region. Some, some of those spots will have those flurries continue on throughout the morning into tomorrow while we're ranging mostly from around minus uh, 8 to minus 12 degrees in most spots on the map. Over on the Saskatchewan side, though, Isla Cross and Green Lake will be seeing some cooler temperatures once again with minus 18 in Isla Cross and minus 14 in Meadow Lake and Green Lake for tomorrow. And now switching over to our seven-day forecast here in the border city. We'll be seeing some warmer temperatures, uh, minus 8 for Wednesday, but we will be seeing those flurries continue through Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, just in time for the holidays, we'll be cooling down, like I was saying, to the season, getting some nice snowfall, you know, some good photos, I guess, for the Christmas season there. And then Sunday, we'll be ending off cooler as well at minus 27 on the weekend. Then Monday, Tuesday, we'll be continuing that cold powder next week from starting on Monday with minus 24 and minus 28 on Tuesday. That's another look at your weather forecast. We'll more coming up after the break.
Welcome to this edition of Pet Project, everybody. We're joined once again with Becca Lawrence from the Lloyd Manson and Community SPCA. Becca, how is everything going over there this week? It's going really good. We're, we're good and busy with our uh, adoption event. So we're, we're busy this week, but it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, so we were chatting a little bit off camera about that. You guys are coming in here at the end of the year. We're, we're going to pull off one more adoption event. So why don't you tell yeah. everybody about that and just kind of the, I know we're, we're going to showcase some of the animals here. And yeah, yeah it's going to be an exciting event. So let the people know what they can look forward to. Yeah, so we are doing our adoptions, of course, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I can't quite remember our prices, but our adult cats are 50. I know that. And the kittens are 125, I believe. <laughs> and uh, puppies are 200 and adult dogs um, are 150, I believe as well, too. But it's on our Facebook page. So take a look just in case I'm wrong. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we're really, we you know, obviously we're always full up on cats. And so we're always trying to find them you can't even see this guy hiding in there <laughs> uh but yeah we're always full up on our cats so we're just we're having our home for the holidays event and hopefully we can find some animals or forever homes yeah and you guys do have a wide variety of animals like you're mentioning i know i was looking at the prices on your instagram and i gotta say it is a steal of a deal so obviously you guys have special pricing for your kitties your cats your yes. puppies your dogs your guinea pigs even which is super exciting if you've been in the market for a guinea pig now's your chance perfect and we uh you guys had another event last week and, you know, I chatted about it for a month straight because I was so excited, but the jail and bail. <laughs> so how did that go? How were the results? You know, just tell me all about it. Yeah, it went really, really well. Um, you know, we our goal was $20,000 and we made it to, um, it's over, like I, I believe we're at about 13700 roughly, give or take a couple numbers. But yeah, we're we're super happy with the outcome. You know, we set that goal, but we're we're not upset by what we got. So we're really, really happy with it. Yeah, it's great news to hear, even though it wasn't quite as much as you guys were hoping for. It is more than last year, which is great to always yeah. see, you know, bigger numbers every year means that uh, the organization's influence is growing, so to speak. Now, yeah. uh, Becca, moving forward, you know, lots of adoptions going on this month, but you guys do have a large influx of some younger animals. And I know you guys were in need of some, some food and things like that. So why don't yeah. we kind of put out, uh, you know, a bit of a message to the to the community you know some things that you guys yeah. need here coming up on the Christmas season yeah so I mean like you can kind of see behind me there that's our secret wall for the puppies <laughs> uh, so yeah we have two mama dogs and nine 14 puppies a <laughs> little baby potato still but mamas are eating a whole bunch of food so we are looking at uh, still needing lots of puppy wet and dry food. And uh, even our cat, our cat uh, food, it's gone down quite a bit as well too. We had pretty much all of our kittens come back from foster. So we have tons of little babies, you know, that are all eating their wet food. And oh, well, different here, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, so we got tons and tons and tons of babies that are all chowing down on all their food. And uh, yeah, we just really want to make sure that they have all the extra nummy stuff for the over the holiday season if uh, they can't find their home before that kind of thing. So we're just trying to stock them up and make sure they have all their all their good stuff. Which, fingers crossed with this adoption event, lots of those animals find their forever homes. And you did yeah. mention back uh, fostering that a lot of the kittens have come back. I'm assuming that means, obviously, you guys are looking for some new fosters in the future as well? Yeah, and I mean, we think that, you know, our current fosters, they'll foster again. But, uh, you know, obviously everyone's going to be taking a little bit of a break over the, over the holiday season, I think. And uh, like I said, like most of these are all these kittens are ready to go now so and we haven't knock on wood haven't had much for kittens coming in again so that's nice but uh you know we are looking for fosters for our um our mom and puppies so if there's anyone that is willing to you know take that on in their life we're definitely looking for fosters for that 
Perfect. Well, obviously, if anybody out there is in the market, you know, you're not going to get a better deal on a little kitty or a puppy or a cat or a dog or a guinea pig anytime soon. This is the chance yeah. to stop by. So that's unfortunately all the time we have for this week, Becca, but I want to thank you for stopping by. I want to thank all of yeah. our viewers for checking us out, and we will catch all of you again in the new year. Yes, for sure. See you in the new year. Manage your waste and recyclables with Quick Pick Waste Disposal. Call 780-875-4100 today or visit quickpick.ca. I'm joined now with author Anne Charles. And first of all, I'll get you just to go a little bit into your background and just how you started writing. I was actually writing in the late 1990s trying to learn how to craft a story. And I didn't want to be a writer all my life, but I was reading different books and I didn't uh, always love the ending. I kind of wanted it to end a different way. So then I would think about how I would end it. And so that kind of spurred me to write the first book I ever did. And it was by hand on notebook paper. Um, I did type it up on the old fashioned word processor and uh, sent that one in to a publisher and it was rejected, but they were really nice. And they told me to keep trying, don't give up. So I don't know if they really meant that, but I took it serious and I kept going. And so it wasn't until the late, it was around 2007 that I finally really, uh, I'd spent a lot of time learning marketing and about the craft by then, but I thought, okay, now it's time to get serious. And so 2011, the first book come out and then I still worked my day job full time in the day and then we're writing at night. But then about 2014, I was finally able to quit the day job and just be a full time writer. Um, and um, ever since then, you know, no looking back, just keep writing and publishing and keep on going. Yeah, that's great to hear. And you know, your newest book in the Jack Rabbit Junction series recently released last month. So right. can you just tell me about the series, first of all? Sure. Jack Rabbit Junction Mystery Series takes place in southeastern Arizona down near the, an RV park. Uh, those of you who might not know Arizona, you know, in the winter, we fill up with all the snowbirds coming south. And a lot of these RV parks will become small cities or towns even with so many people there at the different RV campgrounds. And, and so I wanted to write a, a story set down in kind of nowhere land, um, Arizona at this RV park park and it's not a huge one but you know it it's it starts with a, a three older guys going to look for wives because they don't want to grow old alone and one of them um his granddaughter comes she's in her mid-30s so she's not young but she comes along by force from her mother because her mother's afraid that her her father is going to find a, a gold digger so claire morgan's job is to keep her grandfather from getting hooked up with some kind of gold digger down there you know so that's kind of the start and then it's his two army buddies that are there with him and um there's a, a bunch of older ladies they've hooked up with to come in and you know have a, a fun time trying it out. So it's really kind of, um, I always say wild and woolly. Um, it's, and, and it is listed as a mystery because there are mysteries in each book and, and it is a series. You can read them out of order, but it's better if you read them in order. But it's also more of action adventure and treasure hunting. So I, I often read Treasure Island before I get back into that series to kind of refresh my brain. Um, so it's it's a fun adventure action you know mystery suspense with some romance and a lot of humor in it and with the newest release uh jingle balls can you just tell me a bit about this uh christmasy style yeah. book so this is the the cover i'm not sure how that if that shows okay but um yeah so this is not your typical um warm and cozy christmas story it is a novella um, it's the theme is is based around divorce. And if anyone's come from divorced um, families or divorced themselves, uh, I'm, I'm that on both counts, you know that holidays after a divorce aren't always the smoothest thing and there's a lot of emotions evolved. Uh, and so this is the story of the three Morgan sisters with their mother who has recently divorced their father. So they're, again, they're in their thirties, so they're not kids, but their parents were married over 30 years. And, and this is a bit of a traumatic thing for their mother, who's not the easiest woman to live with. And so their mother is struggling with uh, what's going into all this, you know, divorce and being on her own now. Um, and 
uh, the father, their father is coming down for the first time to Southeast Arizona where they're all at and dropping in like Santa to see them and bring them gifts. And it's causing some real ripples across everything. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's, it's a, it's, I, I don't know other than, like I said, wild and woolly and crazy. It's not warm and fuzzy, but it's fun. And, and for the fans of the series so far, um, most of them I'm getting, I mean, everybody that writes me, they just, they love it. They think it's funny. And so that's what my goal was, was to fit it in with the series and make it feel like the series does. And also to give the fans who love the Morgan sisters, something more to read and, and have fun with over the holidays. So if anyone is looking to purchase any of your books, where should they go? Well, my website is the easiest place, www.annecharles.com. And there's no E on Ann, so just annncharles.com. And if you go to the books page, I have a little, you know, bit about each book. And then I have all the different links because I have them all in ebook and they're in print and they're in audio book as well. So it depends what you like, you know, to how you like to read or listen. It, they're all out there and that's where you can find the links or go to most of your major vendors and you can find them. Uh, I am available for libraries too. And I'm in a lot of libraries, but it takes a lot of times the patrons to be able to get the library, you know, the libraries to purchase and, and get the books in. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Anne. Thank you for having me on here. And I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season, a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Kwanzaa, um, all of it in between, um, just a wonderful season. And now ending off with taking another look at your seven day forecast here. We'll be seeing some snowfall throughout the week on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday will cool down just in time for the holidays. Minus 22 on Friday, minus 20 on Saturday. So make sure you are plugging your vehicles, bundling up outside and enjoying those holidays while you can. Sunday will end off with minus 27 with some more snowfall and starting off next week, we'll continue that cool pattern with minus 24 next Monday and seeing some more snowfall at minus 28 next Tuesday. Thank you very much, Shelby. That is all the time we have for right now, though. So if you want to catch some more news, you can stay tuned for the next hour. For right now, I'm Tate Lakecraft, and have a good one.